Hello world, and welcome to my first episode of my new channel, DXO. Um, my name is Don. Welcome. Happy to have you here. Uh, so this channel is, uh, at this point at least, it, it's about using DXO, and it's particularly about... So recently um, I started uh, what is essentially a 365 project, uh, a photo a day for a year, um, but I started it on January 3rd. Um, I decided to call it a 362 project um, and call it close enough. And and that's kind of what I'll be doing with these videos as well, is not trying to dwell on making things perfect, just trying to dwell on, on continuing to um, produce something. So uh, one of the things I was thinking about when I was deciding to do this was that there aren't a lot of videos for DxO. Now, you know, most of these videos will probably be pretty short. I'm not doing overly complicated photos here, um, but I thought that that just kind of processing through them, you might just get a sense for um, working your way through the software, what it's like to use, what it can do, um, and and you know basically I'm just putting a putting a little feeler out there to see is this kind of thing helpful for people, uh, especially people starting out. I've been using DxO for a while. Um, basically from the point that they went to photo lab branding um, so you know, I've got a reasonably solid knowledge uh, of this software so hopefully hopefully uh, I'll be able to provide you some some value so um, yeah let's go ahead and jump right in um, just gonna turn off this bit No. Oh, yep. There it goes. Great. Cool. Um, so, my photo of the day. Here it is. So we're looking at um, Photo Lab, and right now um, I am in the um, Photo Library tab. Essentially, it's super simple um, software in terms of how it's structured and how you access your photos. Um, you can just see real, really simply. Um, 362 project and I've got my, my various days um, along there you just navigate there's no cataloging to be done although you can index it if you want to use more um, of the search features um, then of course you got uh, metadata on this side as you're looking here so this is sort of the browser stage you know you can work your way through photos Have a look at them, see what uh, see what you think in terms of um, which ones which ones you want to pick, etc. So, um, I've already had a quick peek at these. Uh, this one essentially it was sort of a gray rainy day. I just wanted to represent that, but then this sort of splash of color in amongst the gray rainy. Um, so that's why I've got the uh, sort of the overcast skies and the really soft muted light. Um, but then also, you know, if we get in here, I've got some. Um, some nice sort of detailed raindrops uh, on the flower and whatnot. So this was my photo for the day. Very simple concept, but again, for me, for this project, that's what it's about, keeping it simple um, and just looking to try and produce something every day um, and get it up there into the into the project. So, so what will I do with this one? So looking at this, uh, is this the one that I was going to use? So I'm going to just pop up here so I can see um, so this one is f5.6 now I think I was so I basically these photos I, I had just done them on um, f8 and f5.6 um, and then there was a little bit of wind so I took a few of each I think maybe the first one might be oh yeah no I didn't include that I did do one on f f4 as well um, but I, I liked the f8 better I just like it's still out of focus but just a little bit more definition in this um, uh, vine going up there I prefer to that where it just goes that little bit um, that little bit softer so do that yeah so I'll go go ahead with this one so photo lab actually editing a photo so I'm just gonna double click it and that's gonna take me across into this customized tab here I could equally um, click the customize tab but just how I usually do it and what do we see so we've got this um, th these thumbnails down at the bottom I'm just going to actually get rid of those um, I just find it while I'm while I'm working on things a little bit easier to do 
Um, so when I'm looking at this photo, first of all, I know that it's um, a bit dark. I shot it, um, you know, with a with a, a minus um, minus 0.7 um, exposure, just to try and make sure that not not that there's much detail there anyway, but I just didn't want it to actually be be too blown out in camera. Um, so I know that I'm going to want to be lifting this up. So essentially, I, I kind of like, you, you can do different things, like, you know, you can create favorites and, and sort of um, organize these panels in whatever way you like. But I actually quite just, I dig how they're set up as they are. Um, so we've got exposure sorts of things here. Like I said, I know I had a minus 0.7, so I'll probably just give that a 0.7 to see where that starts me. Cool quite a bit better. Probably pretty much it, actually. Um, I always like to um, have a quick peek. So the DxO has got this this uh, feature called Smart Lighting. Um, I always like to have a quick look at that. So what's that done? That's basically brightened things up just that touch more. But do I like it? Sometimes I love it. Sometimes I don't. I think on this photo I don't overly. I'm gonna pop it down a touch and see. Maybe you don't, you know you don't need to use the default. So let me just see. Is that yeah, that's giving me a little touch of lift without washing those colors out. I just found it was it was sort of washing the colors a little previously. Um, selective tone I don't tend to use too much. Clear view I, I use a little bit from time to time, but not usually on the whole photo. Um, you can do that in local adjustments, which I'll I'll um, peek into in a little while. I mean, it's it's interesting to see you know sort of what it does. This is the sort of adjustment that when I first started using DxO, it was like it was like the magic slider, and I would like use all of it all of the time. Um, but over time, I've kind of come to to feel that it's most often a little bit overdone of course you can turn it down um, but again I just usually leave that one off um, unless it's a really hazy photo and uh, and do it locally uh, on the inside always worth popping contrast on normally um, with micro contrast will jump up so this has got a wee little um, magic wand here suggesting that it's on auto um, and the micro contrast will generally uh, pop up to around 16 on my camera, but I do notice different cameras um, have different results, so I guess that's something that's sort of dialed in. Um, fine contrast is actually only here if you have the film pack, which is an addition. Um, so if you don't have film pack, you're probably not going to see that uh, that feature there. I use it sometimes. Not I usually have a peek at what it is going to look like, but again, it just just gets a little bit gets a little bit much um, so I, I'm going to leave that uh, leave that be might come back to uh, tone adjustment um, a little bit later on but for now um, I'm just going to leave that as well so popping over to the um, popping over to the uh, color tab so we've got white balance at the top there. Um, I, I could, I'm just going to um, jump away for a second, just so that's on 53, 38, and minus one. I did do sort of a, a reference um, gray card just so I could see what neutral would be. 53, 73, minus three, that's yeah, awfully close. So that'll do. <clears throat> just pop back over. Yeah, that is the one I was working on. I thought so. Cool. Um, vibrance and saturation. This is an interesting slider. There's um, or an interesting situation. I, I noticed that uh, you know if I choose uh, from the presets here, which I won't do right at this moment, but if I choose neutral colors um, from here, it actually uh, does a plus 10 on vibrance and a minus 10 on saturation. So I, I guess what that's saying to me is that their natural default is a little bit um, saturated and a little bit punchy. Um, so, but yeah, this, honestly, this is, this is feeling quite saturated to me. Um, oh, I should say as well, which I, I didn't do, 
you know, if I if I compare before and after, you get get that kind of a look. Um, but one thing you don't automatically get is um, what lens corrections are going on in the background, because they just sort of if 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 it's a lens that has corrections, they go on um, automatically in the background. So just see, you can see there that it's already um, applied some lens corrections to that lens, which is really handy. It's one of the things I, I really like the most about the software. So color rendering. I'm just going to leave it on camera. I don't have any reason. But especially if you've got film pack, you can get a lot of a lot of bits and pieces. Actually, I'm curious. Um, so if I come into digital film, if I can something like a Fuji. Notice it darkens it quite a bit. Let me just compare that. Turn that off for a second. Yeah, so it's making the yellows a bit more saturated, but probably just because it's darkening it. Um, I think I'll, I'll just stick with the camera. Uh, generic rendering and camera default rendering. That'll do for now. Um, so that's all good. I'm curious. I'm going to just um, pop this on for a second, not for the black and white, but they have this landscape um, in here which often shifts the greens a bit, um, which sometimes I like. So I always have a quick peek at how I feel about the green shift. Oh, I do like that in this case. It's also intensifying that red quite a bit, although it washes the yellow a bit. Interesting. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that. I do, I do in fact like that. And I'll probably see if I can punch that yellow um, a little bit more just shortly here. So I'm going to, on the topic of yellow, come down here and grab this, grab this wee um, eyedropper, um, and get that color range there. And then one of the things I like to do to make sure that I've got what I think I've got is uh, just desaturate it, and sure enough. Um, so now that I see that, I'll just bump the saturation up a bit for that. Just because I... The whole idea here is that the flowers pop quite a bit. Luminance uh, quickly starts to look a bit gray, so I'm not going to go very far on that, but I might just pop it down a smidge. Yeah, maybe even minus five, just a touch. Yeah, that adds a nice, that adds a nice um, extra little punch there. Nice. Um, let's see. So I'm not too worried about um, the denoising. This was on 400 on a D750. It's essentially noiseless. Um, I don't think there's anything else in here. There's also, you know, things going on um, in the background. If I come over here, uh, there's distortion correction we've seen already. Actually, back here, um, there's vignetting. Um, which is part of the lens corrections, which is being taken care of automatically. Um, and then there's also, where does it sit here? Yeah, I think so. Uh, lens sharpness. So basically the lens has been analyzed and, and it, you know, there's the sharpness being applied um, as necessary um, and potentially to different sections of the lens. You know, for example, if the edges were, um, if the edges were, uh, a bit softer than than it can it can work on that so that's quite a cool feature and I think you know honestly I might add a little um, creative vignette here I'm just gonna see what it looks like not much of one just a smidge um, creative vignette there's the one and and again also lots of the things in here I have because I have film pack uh, and or um, what's the other thing called view uh, Viewpoint, that's it, um, which is their uh, extra software for getting things straight, essentially. Um, so now, how do I feel about this? Let's pop that down. I just want to be able to see where it is. Maybe bring, bring this down a touch. Just roughly there. Obviously, that's crazy. Um, and then... I just see if I feel like that adds. Uh, 
I actually do. And, and I know it's a bit funny because on one on one hand I'm having the um, vignetting automatically removed that naturally happens on the lens and then on the other hand I'm coming behind and adding it in. But I think that's a good thing. It's just like you know starting with a neutral um, starting with a neutral um, white point for example or, or, or uh, white balance sorry um, that then you know then you can sort of make your creative adjustments from there but you at least know where it's where it's meant to start. Nice. So yeah, I think I think I, I, again I'm just having a look. Um, so I'm I'm holding my cursor over here, um, and I'm simultaneously looking down here at the numbers that are actually up here at the numbers that are appearing, um, to get a sense for where that is. And honestly, I think that's probably I, I might. What I'm think I'm going to do is I'll I'll maybe pull that up a little bit as I pop back to the um, section here and maybe just. Um, Bring this in a little bit. I'm um, just gonna see, make sure that I'm not blowing anything here. So interesting. So I've got some some things that are um, blowing in terms of color. I don't think that's going to be impacted by this though. I think that's just just a color situation. Yeah. So I will do that. Um, which I mean, this is a, essentially the equivalent of you know in a lot of Lightroom videos, people always crank their whites and their blacks and whatnot, and that, that's all I'm doing here. It's just having a peek. Though those blacks are already pretty, you know, they're they're going to black pretty much straight away. So I actually think I'm not going to um, not going to do anything with those. So looking, I'm just thinking um, that I'm going to pop over here and maybe. Oh, that was already on auto. Let me. What does it want to do? Fifteen. Let me see what it's done. Yeah, actually, that's it. It was just this tiny little bit of um, something not being right. So that's done the horizon, but now you can see there's sort of white lines around here, and I'm just going to click on crop, and it will just auto auto pull in for me. Nice. And then with that, speaking of cropping, I think I'm going to. Pull the this side in a bit, just a little, um, and maybe this side. Is, I, I kind of I decided to include this vine because I liked it, but I maybe just take a take a smidge off of that. And the way I've been cropping these ones, and and I want to leave the gray up here. I want to um, I want to be able to see. Um, I want to be able to see that um, because again, the whole idea was about. Um, was about this splash of color, the splash of brightness on a on an otherwise kind of gray and dreary day. Nice. Just taking a moment to think. I haven't worked through this beforehand. You know, I thought, oh, should I edit it first and then you know step people through the edit that I made? Um, but I decided to just kind of freestyle it, to be honest, because like I said, it's it's just about getting in there and doing it. So. Hopefully this doesn't go too long. Um, with that, actually, I'm going to um, end this one. Say thank you very much for watching, and uh, you know, if it was in any way useful or uh, helpful or entertaining or anything else, um, please do come along and and check out what comes next. Cheers. Bye bye.